these are the worst of times I do believe it's true I do believe it's true it's time to come back to the BS report John Sanko and Kevin Barnett here WICR it is 822 on a Tuesday evening we just got through our top five picks of our NFL mock draft the NFL drafts Draft set for 8 p.m. this upcoming Thursday, the official start of the NFL season. And now we're going to move on to, to pick number six, the Atlanta Falcons. They were rumored to want to move up to number one to get to Davion Clowney, but that, that rumor has seemed to have simmered just a little bit. Who do you see the Atlanta Falcons, a team that really disappointed last year, taking with this pick? I think they need a lot of a lot of moves on the defense. However, I think they're going to go offense here. I think they're going to hit the home run of the draft and get Greg Robinson. You think at number six. This is barring no trades, obviously. Because mm -hmm. if Greg Robinson is still around at number five or something, someone's going to trade up to try and get him. Mm -hmm. Someone will try and do that, and I know that for a fact. I mean, I could say I know that for a fact. But, <laughs> uh, no, I think Greg Robinson feels a huge need. Matt Ryan was terribly protected last year. They, I mean, this is, feels a huge need for them. I mean, Sam Baker, he was, had injury problems, the offensive left tackle. Uh, they've never really had a good right tackle. Uh, they've had, like, four different starting right tackles in the past, like, th four years. Mm -hmm. So... This would fill a huge need for them. Greg Badge, you get the best offensive tackle in the draft. Kid, I watched it Auburn closely, actually, because I kept hearing his name rise up quickly. So then I, I paid attention closely to him whenever Auburn had a huge game, which was a lot last year. Yeah. Uh, great true. run blocker. Obviously, Trey Mason wasn't a Heisman Trophy candidate, you know, without a good offensive line. So mm. that's uh, what I'm going uh, I'm going I'm going offensive line as well, but I'm going Jake Matthews, uh, a team that I thought Oakland could pick up if they wanted to, but they're gonna pick they're gonna get Sammy Watkins, I said. So I think Jake Matthews goes six. I think he goes next. I think uh, I think it's a safe pick uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. It's tempting to trade up number one, but I think they'd have to give up too much. Uh, when you when you could get a player like Jake Matthews, a position that you need at six, they have shown them they are willing to give up a lot though. Yeah, because what they did with Julio Jones, Ex well that they, that uh, worked out beautifully. And that worked out very well. So, so uh, but I see them going with with Jake Matthews uh, at number six, offensive tackle at Texas A&M. So yeah, we're in the same same mode. Same 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 idea. Same idea. Right. Now, number seven, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, they're under new management this year, a new head coach, Lovey Smith. Uh, what do you see the Buccaneers doing at the number seven pick? I think that this is going to draw a little ooze. I think this is going to be a great pick, though. I wouldn't mind if this guy was here for my New York Giants, but I think that they're going to take defensive tackle Aaron Donald from Pittsburgh. Really? This is a guy who has soared up draft boards. And okay. I remember, I remember, do you remember Dentari Poe? He was a defensive tackle from Memphis. The Chiefs took him at number 11 when he was predicted to go in the 20s. Okay. That turned out to be a really good pick because okay. of how athletic he was. Aaron Donald's really athletic. They already have Joe McCoy. But him and, you know, I say imagine Watt and Clowney. If him and if you have him and Aaron Donald, and this also were in the Taylor's to Lovey Smith system beautifully, it would. Too. It would. Aaron Donald and Gerald McCoy because Lovey Smith always had good defensive tackles mm -hmm. in Chicago. So I know he's got one Joe McCoy now, but you can put McCoy and Donald together. That and then with the already they already have a great linebacker, Levante David. So um, they already they do have a good defense. I think they need a receiver, but I'm not. Yes, I have so many receivers going in the first round, but I think with Evans off the board already, that no other receivers worth taking in the top ten. See, this is where I disagree with you because I don't have Evans off the board yet. And that's yes. why I have Evans going number seven to Tampa Bay. Evans makes sense here, but I have Evans off the board. Yes, yeah, so now. that again, we you just have him going before I do, and yes. I think Tampa Bay they need a wide receiver desperately. Off oh, uh, Simmons and Jackson, yeah. exactly. And frankly, Doug Martin, I think he needs a little of attention off of him because people were stuffing the box last year when they couldn't pass the ball and just stopping Doug Martin. You get another receiver, you give him more space, you help your entire offense. Uh, so that's why I think Evans is going to go to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yes. All right, so, again, you agree with my pick, but you just have them going earlier than I do. Uh, now let's move to number eight, the Minnesota Vikings. They have the best running back in football, but they have no quarterback to speak of whatsoever. Do you see the Vikings taking a quarterback at number eight? I do indeed. Did you pull some Professor You said I pulled Professor X stuff last week. Did you just I mean, pull it on me right I now? Mean, I mean, what, what do you got? Mind? What uh, do you got the Vikings I taking? I got the best quarterback in the draft going to Minnesota. It's not named Aaron Murray, obviously, <laughs> but, you know. Aaron Murray, obviously, you know, sadly, I watched Green Man crush, man crush. Of course, I watched Gruden's QB camp on that one. Well, uh -huh. He was on, of course. Yes. But, um, and you can't take what Gruden says too seriously. Obviously. I love John Gruden. Well, he so. likes everybody, though. I so. love John He Gruden. loves everybody. But, yes, I have Blake Bortles going to Minnesota. Kick and play. I think he once he joins that team, he'll immediately be the best quarterback on the roster. Matt Castle was 
brutal for Kansas City a couple of years ago. Didn't really do much, I don't think, in the games he did play for me. He had like one or two good, decent games, but uh, I kind of like Christian Ponder. They were the best, I thought, when he was But they did not offer him, him an extension they, on his deal. They did not pick up his option, so he's out of there. Josh Freeman with the one game was a disaster. Now he's on my New York Giants, of course. <laughs> the one, yeah, it was a real great, you know, but whatever. Uh, we'll get to the Giants later. Um, Blake Bortles, I think, though, makes all too much sense. Uh, I I, this, I agree with you here. I think Blake Bortles makes too much sense here. I think that um, Minnesota, they need a quarterback, and they need someone who could really kind of balance out their obviously one-dimensional offense. You got Greg Jennings at wide receiver, a good wide receiver. Uh, I, I agree with you. I think I think Blake Bortles to Minnesota just makes a lot of sense. Yes. I, I, I agree. And I'm not sure he's the best quarterback in the draft. I'm not as sold as you. Uh, on that fact, because I don't think any of the quarterbacks have really separated themselves. Yeah, fact, I, I love I love Carr at quarterback. I've grown to really, really he's like. He's not him. gonna get a lot of love because it's the way his brother. That's exactly. Why. But it's I've I've really was. grown to like him a lot just watching ESPN for the past. He was great two in that one game I saw him play on a Friday against San Jose State. He was very good. So, uh, but I agree with you. Blake Bortles, I think, goes number eight to Minnesota. Yes. All right, so moving on down the line, we got number nine, the AFC East team. Now, this is a team that ESPN is trading up to the number one pick in their latest uh, mock draft, the Buffalo Bills. But for us, we have them at number nine. Who do you see the Bills taking it with the number nine pick? Uh, quite simple. I think they need a little help on offense they can get. Um, I think that they go Jake Matthews here. They get they get a home run pick, and Jake Matthews at number nine, I think. I, um, they need help on it for a long time. Uh, they've, they've given their good guys away, it seems like. They've mm -hmm. never really had a real – when they trade Jason Peters away, it feels like they haven't had a real staple at, on the offensive line since they traded him away. Eric Wood's a good player, I'll say that. But I think Greg Matthews makes a lot of I – mean, Jake Matthews, excuse me, makes yeah. a lot of sense here. Uh, I think that I'm going with Eric Ebron uh, out of North Ooh. Carolina. I think that uh, they need help on offense, like you said, and I think they see the success of a two tight end system every – basically every week with the Patriots winning and the Bills not winning that often. So I think with Scott Chandler at tight end, and I think with Eric Ebron, they're going to try and emulate the same thing. And I think E.J. Manuel is going to have a good bounce back year after injury. I was really impressed the way he played when he was healthy with yes, the Bills. Very, and I think it's going to I think it's gonna help him. That's, that's why I got Eric Ebron going uh, to the Buffalo Bills here. I can see that, absolutely. So, all right. So we we actually so kind of disagree say, on the needs there. All I can say yeah. is, I mean, oh, they need they need a guy. Just, well, I know, but we disagree on like the position. I think that was the first time we disagreed. I just offense, watched defense, things blah, blah, blah. of Ebron lately. I would love if my Giants took him at twelve. Don't get me wrong, but at the same time, I think this guy does have room to develop. So, well, I, I mean, I'm yeah. not saying he doesn't, but I'm yeah. saying that I think he's the best tight end in the draft, and I think the Bills yeah. are going to take him. It's not even close. Yes. Uh, so we now we get to the number ten, the NFC North team that really disappointed last year, despite having the best wide receiver in football, the Detroit Lions. Who, according uh, according to NFL, they're in need of another wide receiver because there's no one else besides Calvin Johnson. Now I'm wondering, what do you think the Detroit Lions? Oh, what do you see them doing? Well, I don't see how they they did just sign Golden Tate and give him a they fat did just con sign they gave him a fat yeah. contract. So I don't mm -hmm. know. I, I don't know why they knew what they would take a first one. They have now probably. I'm won. not saying first round, but I'm just saying. In hey, I think they have. Maybe they need a slot receiver. I don't know. That's someone I think they could take in the third round. They have plenty more needs. Their biggest need, though, is safety, hands down. And they go with, I think they take a kid here who's a top five player in the overall draft. And Sean, but he goes by, ha ha, Clinton Dix, <laughs> the fantastic safety out of Alabama. Mm -hmm. He's a product of that Nick Saban defense. He'll fill a huge need for they've They've had defensive problems for I don't know how long. Their offense, I think, is set. Um, they, I think they got a good line. Stafford seems protected. Reggie Bush is injury prone, but he had a great year last year. He did play. When he did play, yes. Even if Bush is hurt, though, they do have a very capable backup in Joyke Bell. Agreed. Joyke Bell, very capable backup. So I think they got to go defense here. Haha, -ha, Clinton Dix was a huge need right away. And he's a great player, I think, too. Oh, I agree with you. A fantastic player coming from a system that obviously is built for success in Alabama. Uh, for me, I'm going with Darquise Denner, a quarterback at a Michigan State. Listen, the, the as you said, the secondary for the Lions is absolutely terrible. It There's there's nothing good about it in my mind. Uh, so I think that they're going to go with someone who they think could lock down a wide receiver and kind of make a – Kind of shut down half the field, if you will, and I think they're going to take that bet on Dark Reese Denner out of Michigan State. Nice, nice. All right, so now moving down the line, we have caught through the first 10 picks. Now we're into number 11. The Tennessee Titans will have a new head coach. They, they had a 7-9 and nine record last year. Who do you see the Tennessee Titans taking in the first round? Dark Wees Dennard. Okay. Dark Wees hey. Dennard. See, that's, <laughs> why, that's why I kind of had nothing to say right there. Like, yeah. They just lost Alteron Werner to Tampa Bay. In Lovey Smith's system, uh, so I think that they need to replace him right away. I think Dennard. I watched him play at Michigan State. Uh, watched him playing against Notre Dame this year. Kid can play. 
Mm. He's a lockdown guy. I agree, agree with everything you just said. A guy can shut down half the field. He seems like he's fallen off on some mocks, but yeah. Tennessee, even if, even if he, he might be considered a reach at 11 now, Tennessee has no sh- not shot away from reaching on players before. Last year, he took Chance Warmack at number 10, which was, even though he's a good player, it was considered a little bit of a reach. Jake Locker at number 8, so they're not shy to reach. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, we, we flip up here. I have Ha Dixon going, uh, Clinton Dix, yes. yeah, going, going to Tennessee. So, I mean, we, we, we just put pop. They have needs in the secondary. Exactly. So, so you know what? We're on the same page. Uh, at number 12, we get to your New York Giants. You have a lot invested in this pick. Who do you, who, who do you have them taking? I think that, well, well, obviously there's three great offensive linemen here. This is the New York Giants philosophy. Take the best player on the board. And even though this guy has had character concerns, it seems like lately, the Giants seems like have kind of like maybe lately with guys, even guys like Will Hill, have maybe... Said okay, well, this is your shot. I th- Taylor Luan is still on the board. The Giants will take Taylor Luan. Okay. That and that that's gonna if, if Taylor Luan is still on the board, which I think he has a decent shot at being. The Giants will take Taylor Luan. I think. I think it's gonna be Taylor Luan or Zach Martin. I think it's gonna be offensive line, um, or defensive line. I think they have they would they would have to do somewhere on this pick. But I think with Donald off the board. Um, I don't think there's any receiver good at take. They have a glaring need at receiver. They need another running back. Those are got those are things though that I don't think are really you can take. Like spoiler, I don't have a running back going in this first round at all. And neither do I. Yeah, I, I don't not think good, I don't think there's a running back capable of, of the first round talent. No. Yeah, not and there wasn't one last year. I mean, but there were very good running, rookie running backs last year. But a lot Eddie of Lacey, yeah, yeah, obviously. And yeah. Giovanni Bernard. They were yeah. just, just situational, but Eddie Lacey turned proved out to be very good. Uh I think that they still do have a lot of needs. The secondary, I think, is set. Uh, they've made a lot of signings in the secondary this offseason. Um, even though Will Hill has question marks, Stevie Brown was a capable starter when he did play. So uh, I think they either got to go D-line or O-line here. Um, or Eric Ebron. I think Ebron would be available. I just think, though, if Terry Lewan's available, you got to snatch him up. Uh, I could agree with you. I think it would be very tempting. Now, uh, something that I see that the Giants really need is a linebacker. Uh, that that that's what I kind of think. That's where I'm kind of leaning. But I also agree with you in the offensive line. So I'm torn here. Yeah. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to tell you I'm torn. I agree with you. Uh, in terms of the offensive lineman that that you should take, uh, Luan if he's there. But I'm also looking at Anthony Barr. Uh, ESPN has them has him going 15 to Pittsburgh, and I think the Giants might try and scoop him up to help out their their linebacker. And I think I'm going to go with that. Yeah. I think I think I'm going to go with Anthony Barr, UCLA senior. I think that the Giants going to try and pick him up at 12, try and spoil the Steelers according to the ESPN mock draft. Uh, but that's where I see the Giants. I going. could definitely see that. I wouldn't have a problem with that either. Um, I, they did just sign Jamil McLean, who was a solid guy for Baltimore all these mm-hmm. years, and they have John Beeson. I, I didn't mind Spencer pacing her playing linebacker last year, so I wouldn't hate to pick up Anthony Barr though. Uh, I think he would do good. He's a speedy guy. The Giants don't have the kind of system where they rush the linebacker a lot, though. They're so reliant on the pass rushers. Mm-hmm. But that maybe, if you take a guy like Barr, maybe they can try some of the new ones because they have they don't really blitz a lot. So mm-hmm. maybe this could open them up, saying, "Hey, our, our pass rush isn't the same as it used to be." So that's why I wouldn't hate to pick. But I do think if Luan is on the board, you absolutely take Taylor Luan. Okay, so now we get to the 13 pick in the St. Louis Rams. Back on the board. Well, as we said, I think they have a glaring need second there. With Clinton Dix off the board, I think, by now, you got to go with second best safety in the draft. Very hard-hitting safety from Louisville named Calvin Pryor. Mm-hmm. Very hard-hitting safety. Good ball player. Uh, not the best ball skills, but goes in there, starts right away, could could make an instant impact on that defense. Uh, I personally, I agree with you, Calvin Pryor is very tempting, but I actually think the team following the Rams are going to take him. Oh, the Bears. Uh, so but I, got, I got Aaron Donald, defensive tackle. I have him going to St. Louis uh, because I think they already have a good defense. If they get him in the center there as a defensive that, tackle, that would just be makes the best, them better. That would be the best young defensive line in football. No, it would be, and with them already getting, for me, uh, they, with they're already boosting their offensive line in the, in the second pick for me, uh, getting Robinson, I think that they're going to work on their defensive line here and get Donald, and then I think they'll really have the foundations for both sides of the football that they need. Uh, so that's why I got yeah, Aaron between, Donald going between 13. Robert Quinn, Chris Long, Brocker, Michael Brockers, uh, defensive tackle. That, that's a LSU. very good defense. Best that's young a very good defense. Football. Already got a good one, but adding Donald on that would be good. I agree with you there, though. So yes. I take the suspense out of the 14 pick with the uh, Chicago Bears because this is where I got Pryor going safety out of Louisville. Uh, I have him going 14 to, to the Chicago Bears. Uh, where do you where do you see the Bears? Uh, same area, secondary. I haven't. This might be a surprise because the cornerback has never been a big need for them. But I have them going with Justin Gilbert at Oklahoma State. Good, <laughs> really solid, fast cornerback. The thing is, I think I could see him move over to safety. That's the thing. I could see him. I see him as very versatile. So I think no matter what, he can play in that secondary. 
Um, I offensively, I think they're one of the best. They're one of the top five offenses in football. Uh, with Jay Cullen and two great receivers and Matt Forte, uh, their offensive line seems to finally be coming around after years of disaster. Yeah, out of Oklahoma um, State, right? Did you yes, say that? Kyle, okay. uh, Justin Gilbert yeah, of Oklahoma I'm just, State. I'm just looking up to make sure I, I know what you're talking uh, about. Yeah. I could see them going C.J. Mosley here, too, because, you know, they need a guy. They didn't have the guy to replace Brian Urlacher last year. But I think secondary is an area of concern, especially, like, as we said earlier, with Green Bay and the Detroit with Calvin Johnson, guys who they got to go against. So I think secondary they go here, and that's why they take Justin Gilbert. Okay, so now before we take a break, let's get to the 15 pick. The Pittsburgh Steelers finished 8-8 eight and eight last year. They're a team that needs some offensive line help. They need a bit of secondary help as well. Where do you see the Steelers going with number 15? Neither of those, actually. I Neither think, of them. I think with the loss of Emmanuel Sanders, they go with a very crafty, very accomplished college football wide receiver here, and they go Marquise Lee. Wow. To compliment Antonio Brown. I I have Lee going lower. Um, but Mark, this, this, if this was if this if we were entering if if we're talking about Lee would nobody would have thought Marquise Lee would be available at fifteen if we were going into if this was last year mm. and he had, and he was like uh, if this was like last year going to college Marquise Lee would have been a top five pick. Mm. But uh, I think he's very crafty. A good would could be like a good sturdy presence right away and could come in Antonio Brown because they lost Emmanuel Sanders to the Broncos. Uh, which I said was one of the most underrated signings in the league. Uh-huh. Um, but I think that this it fills a need for them and gives Brad Roethlisberger another weapon to throw to. It, it does. Uh, it does. But I this is where I have you, the pick you had going 14 to Chicago. I have Justin Gilbert going to, to the Steelers because mm-hmm. I think they need secondary yeah. help. So that's why I have him going 15. They do need secondary help, yeah. But uh, they seem to take uh, guys who are very crafty and fit their system right away. Yeah. I just think that this is this is one of the like last year. I didn't think Jarvis Jones was the best player, but they took him because he was like an accomplished college player. Okay. So that's why. And like like when they took Marquise Pouncey, they take they take really solid college players. I okay. think So and guys are well known. So I, that's why I like the Marquise Lee pick here. So. All right. I think that's a little bit too high, but I respect your boldness. I respect, I respect it. There we go. <laughs> you mumbled that. Okay. <laughs> We're going to take a short break here in WIS, and we'll be back with the rest of the NFL first-round mock draft. I'm John Senko. This is Kevin Barnett. Don't go away.